I live on a top floor of a five-story apartment building in a moderately big city. My apartment has a bedroom and a fairly large living room with a big windows out towards, towards the street and the opposite building. That building was a small parking lot up front, so it is not directly across from mine, which I kind of have liked it because of the privacy. Being a night owl, I like to sit up late on my laptop. Sometimes I peek out of my window at the buildings across, looking for lit windows and wonder if anyone else is out there is doing the graveyard shift. Last night, I wish I hadn't. I usually sit with my laptop facing the windows for the last couple nights I had in the corner of my eye, have been seeing a sparsely lit window in the building and across it, I saw some sort of movement last night. My curiosity got the best of me, so I put my computer down and went over to the window to check it out. Surely enough, you could see someone waving, but just barely. The window was lightly dimly lit, but you could definitely see some movement. I thought about it for a second and went to go get a pair of binoculars. After some searching, I found a pair and went back to the window putting them to my eyes. I located the window and got a better look at what was inside it. Appeared to be a person, lit up by the candle. I couldn't make out the person's face, but he was waving at me, apparently because after I had locked into him with the binoculars, he stopped waving for a second, then pointed at me. I felt a chill running down my spine. This was creepy. He pointed at me, and made a circling motion with his finger. He kept doing this over and over until I realized he was signaling for me to turn around. I reacted out of instinct and quickly turned around as if I was really expecting something to lurk behind me. Nothing was there but darkness. Obviously, so I chuckled to myself and turned back to the windows with my binoculars only to find it empty, except for the candle slowly fading out. I jumped back and dropped the binoculars on the floor, the noises of the impact spooking me even more. What the hell? I thought to myself. I went back to my computer. I put on some music and calmed me down and suffered around for a bit until I looked at the time and realized it was about to get light out. I put my computer down and made my whole way through the small hallway that led to my bathroom. I didn't have any lights on. But I was approached to the bathroom. I noticed a flickering light underneath the door. My body froze, even if I didn't forget to turn off the bathroom light. The light bulb could not produce that kind of lightning. So I slowly walked up to the door, took a deep breath, and lightly pushed the door open. I stepped inside, and to my horror, I found a candle sitting in the sink, revealing a message scribbled onto the mirror. Never turned around and that my pretties was don't or never turn around a creepypasta written by Zoslo so Zoslo uh, my final thoughts in the story I honestly found this one to be a really good creepypasta especially with the the whole story of, of its own self now what did I actually think of it well, I found the plotline to be rather good. You know, it's just a simple plotline. It's not like um, your typical scary story with, you know, cliches in there or, or anything like that. But I definitely would have to say that, nev that this story was actually a pretty interesting concept for what this story really was trying to portray. You know, basically, a candle appears at the end. No monster or anything, but... I have a feeling this was paranormal that has been, you know, main source of this story. Now, I remember Mr. Creepypasta narrated this one, and I do know um, a couple people actually narrated this story. I remember Sinister Shaft actually went out of his way to narrate it, and I also remember hearing this from 
Silver's stories at one point. That would have been maybe two years ago. And I honestly thought it was a really neat story for what this is. I definitely would have to say it's a beautiful, well-made made creepypasta. Although I have to say it is short, I definitely do like how the concept of it went out as well as the good grammar and all that. Now, the structuring of the story flat out went beautifully. It actually helped a lot out with the whole pasta. I mean, to be fair, I kind of remember this story maybe just briefly, but it had been, you know, um, a, a while since I last saw it. So, yeah. Um, yes. So, I would have to say right now that I have never heard of this um, story until, you know, a w long time ago. So, with that being the case and with that being said... I really do find this story to be rather good. It's definitely worth it. And for those who are, you know, interested in seeing this story, I will um, sit there and say this right now. If you look on, you know, a couple narrations as well as the Creepypasta Wiki, you will definitely like this story. You know, it's pretty interesting. I still like the story. It's well made. Definitely really wor is worth to watch. Well, not watch, but like it's worth to read. Oh, I'm sorry for jumbling all the letters. I I just can't really, you know, think, think straight really much. I mean, the day I'm recording this, I'm just feeling, well, I'm not sick or anything. I'm just having, you know, weird thoughts of, you know, sitting there and thinking to myself, why... Why am I doing stories? But, you know, I just like to do stories because, well, for fun. And, yeah. I definitely would have to say this story honestly has a really good going for. In to make it as more sense as possible. So, I can't say anything I don't like about this story because there's nothing really to say. But I hope that, I hope there's like a sequel to this or something because it's pretty neat, actually. I always really like how this story went out. It's actually one of my favorite classic creepypastas, especially the, with the fact that Mr. Creepypasta narrated this one, one, you know, a long time ago as well as Silver Stories. So, with that being the case, that being said, um, this is just only my own, simply my own personal opinion. And if you happen to disagree with me, that's fine too. We're all entitled to our own opinions regards to these, um, creepypastas. And this is simply my own personal thoughts. My final rate of this story was def is definitely a 10 out of 10. It's a short but sweet good story. Really definitely see a lot of time and effort into the story. There's definitely a lot going for that I really enjoyed about this story. And... I recommend, um, you know, reading this story if you, um, whenever you guys have the chance to. Anyways, what did you guys personally think about this creepypasta? Did you all enjoy it? Did you all not? Also, what you have done personally to help make this story a lot better? Feel free to leave me now what your thoughts are down in the comments below. I'm the Queen of Lions. Thank you so much for watching today's episode. And if you're new to this channel, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Because I make brand new videos every single day. Don't forget to ring the notification bell to when I upload. So that way you guys will not miss an upload. And as always, please roll the outro because I'm out.